What's in a name? A lot if your last name is Hart and you're from Calgary, Alberta. Today we've got Dallas Hart, promoter for Dungeon Wrestling, the son of Brett the Hitman Hart, and the grandson to the legendary Dungeon Master himself, Stu Hart. Let's find out what it's like growing up a heart, promoting a brand new business, and giving back to the community. Welcome to the ride. Welcome back to the ride with Chevy and Nasty. And uh, as we said, we, we never know where it's going, but we're really excited for today. Uh, we got a great guest uh, for everyone here, uh, starting something really awesome. And, and I know it started already, uh, but gaining traction here in Calgary. We've got Dallas Hart uh, to talk about Dungeon Wrestling. Uh, welcome to the good, show, guys. Dallas. Thanks How are you doing today? today? Appreciate it. Yeah, I know. Really awesome of you to, uh, to join us. We know you've got an event coming up April 7th. Uh, we're going to plug that in a little bit and talk about that. But, um, you know, our show really, we try to relate to guys. We try to relate uh, to, to guys out there going through things, guys, fathers, sons, and all that. Now, um, I didn't want to introduce you as probably what you've been introduced as your entire <laughs> life, probably Bret Hart's son, right? Uh, I'm sure that hit you. And, and getting right into it, you are Bret, the Hitman Hart's son. And so how is that? You know, I, you know, your dad is an international celebrity uh, and growing up his son, th there's probably some of that that comes along with, with the package. How, how did you manage that growing up? Just, you know, um, with that type of, of, yeah, of I mean, intro. It was, um, you know, growing up, it could be challenging at times, I would say, but, you know, you're kind of just used to it for the most part, you know, having a, having him as your father, you know, it was, um, you know, it opened up a lot of doors for me and, you know, it was, uh, it was something that, you know, I never took for granted and, you know, it helped me out a lot in a lot of ways. And, you know, even till this day, it's still, um, his name still carries very well, not just in Canada, but all over the world. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely an honor to be in this family with, with him and all the other wrestling family members like you know, my grandpa owen davy you know there's uh the whole the whole list goes on and and, and that's amazing because canadian football league and you know when we think of of uh you know our careers and our children you know sometimes you know we go around town and it's like oh that's chevy's son and you know but not nearly to the degree of you and 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 you mentioned that the name it's not just your dad's name it's it's your family legacy right and you know, growing up in the family uh, that, you know, in Canada, I was talking to Sheldon before you came on, you know, it, it's it's legendary in terms of the recognition, kind of like, let's say, uh, the equivalent I was thinking of was like the Earnhardt family in NASCAR in the United States, very Americana, very much, even if you're not a NASCAR fan, you know the name. I, I would say that the Hart family really is reminiscent of that. Would you agree in terms of, you know, not not to... To, to, to be full of yourself, but in terms of when you go around, everyone recognizes you. 100%, yeah. Right? And um, yeah, it's like it's one of the stories I have is when I used to work up north on uh, the oil rigs, I was um, at this little gas station in some small town. I can't even remember the town name, but um, I was pumping my gas. And then this older guy in his truck was just sitting over there staring at me. And uh, you know, I could tell he was like thinking something and he wanted to say something to me. And then we're kind of walking in together into the gas station. And he's like, he's like, you're a heart boy, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm like, how'd you know? He's like, he's like, you look just like your grandpa Stu. And then he told me a whole story how he used to watch Stampede Wrestling. And, you know, Stampede Wrestling used to go all around Alberta and used to go to that little town, whatever town that was. But, uh, you know, I always thought that was kind of cool that someone, uh, you know, that age, still could, uh, you know, put those pieces together and, you know, see the, see the genetics. Well, I still remember too. I, I spent a couple of off seasons working on the rigs when I was just trying to get into the CFL. And, uh, as much as it's sort of that wrestling royalty that the hearts, uh, family name was, uh, you guys were known in the patch as well. Like it seemed that everybody I talked to had a story about, uh, Oh yeah, I met, uh, um, one of your uncles that was uh, working in the patch and, uh, you know, it's yeah. just kind of neat how you guys, you know, grew up 
with that kind of family legacy and, and, and that sort of royalty is attached to it. Um, but I think for every kid, every kid's childhood is normal to them. Right. Uh, but right. what are some of the things that, that, you know, kind of stood out to you, uh, growing up? Like, did you spend much time on the road with your dad? Cause one guy said, yeah, I used to watch you when you were, uh, you know, a kid on TV, they see you on, you know, on the televised events. Did you get to travel much with, uh, with the group? Yeah, we would. So my, my dad, he would be on the road quite a bit sometimes, you know, 300 plus days a year. So that was really the only way that we got a chance to see him more often was to go with him. And, uh, yeah, you know, you know, we got to go and hang out, go on the road with him, mostly in the U.S. But, uh, you know, it was uh, it was pretty cool just hanging out in the back in the back of the building, seeing all the wrestlers, and it just was very normal to us back then. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't think too much of it because they would, you know, when they were in town here in Calgary, they'd come over to our house, and um, one one story I can always remember is uh, coming home after school one day, and Undertaker was just having a nap on our couch. And, uh, yeah. I was with some of yeah. my friends and they were, they were not <laughs> sure he was, he wasn't dead. <laughs> he yeah, was... yeah, but I, I, I didn't think so, but maybe some of how the, does the did. How, how does the undertaker, how does the undertaker wake up from a nap? Did he just ride? Yeah. Or like... like kind of like Dracula a bit maybe, but, uh, you know, but yeah, I know some of my friends were, were pretty, pretty starstruck when they saw him, they, you know, they couldn't even believe it. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's just, that's just it's... undertaker having a nap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's 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 pretty funny. Just Undertaker having a nap. You know, it's uh, you, you talk about Starstruck, and it's funny because uh, your dad and I, um, we go back a bit. Uh, you know, I'm wearing the, the Hitman jersey because it's literally my favorite my favorite sports jersey in all sports. And your dad just went up uh, forever Hitman in the in the banners, and I saw you there. Um, yeah, I guess how, how was that moment for the family? Because again, you know, you have a moment like that, that your dad has and all the hard work he put in, but really, like you said, your dad was gone a lot. You missed out on a lot of those, maybe those, those, uh, I guess, typical, I won't say normal, but typical moments that most kids have with their dads around. Uh, but then you see, uh, the honor and respect, uh, he's given in town, how does that, how does that feel, uh, looking at, at your dad and his accomplishments and also knowing, you know, yeah, your role well, first of all, that. I do agree that the Hitman jersey is by far the, one of the best jerseys in sport. I love it. It may, it may be a little biased, but you know, it's, for me, it's one of my favorite jerseys, but, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, him getting honored at the, at the dome the couple of weeks ago, you know, it was, it was an honor to see that and well-deserving, um, you know, back when he, he first got into the whole Hitman thing, um, you know, we we were always down at the saddle dome going to the games, watching the Hitman games. We got to go on the road with them to, you know, Medicine Hat, Saskatoon, watching WHL games. Uh, we went to the Memorial Cup in 99 or something. I forget, 98, 99. Um, you know, so we got, we got to see him be a part of that whole thing, and we were kind of a part of it too. Maybe not, you know, the same level he was, but, you know, we got to be with him and travel with him and see him be honored, you know, being a – spokesman for the hitmen so it was always really cool and you know always really proud of that that he's been a part of hockey and you know hockey's always been my my favorite sport too so well i was, I was just going to ask you that too like growing up in a wrestling family i'm sure you didn't just like wrestle all the time um w was hockey a big part of your upbringing and and with your travel schedule and stuff like were you able did you play in a lot of leagues and did you get a chance to play I didn't know. I never actually did play hot. Like I played hockey with friends and stuff right, and, yeah, yeah. you know, did play it, but I never did play competitive, but, uh, you know, I, it's to me just, you know, being Canadian, watching hockey is just, you know, they go hand in hand. And, uh, you know, when, when I was younger, um, I was a huge wrestling fan, watched like, well, my dad was in WWE and then kind of when he was done, I kind of stepped away from it and just kind of lost interest in it a bit. And, um, uh, you know, I just, I just didn't feel it was really for me at that time when I was a teenager, my dad was out of it. So I just, you know, kind of lost the appeal to me, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I kind of find interesting because, you know, you grew up in it and then it ended, um, like for Chevy and I were talking, we we're you know, huge in WWF, WWE until we got in our sports careers and, and, you know, that stuff just kind of gets pushed uh, behind. Mm -hmm. For you, you know, as, uh, uh, as you grew up, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you got involved in a number of different ventures. 
going back to wrestling, what what was that like? First off, you know, I know that the wrestling community is going to love seeing the heart name back in there and, and love what you're doing. Was that difficult for you to go back into the family line of work? Or is that something that you always had in the back of your mind that you would pursue um, something in wrestling? Yeah, to be honest, like it, it was just something in the last probably five years that's um, kind of jumped into the, to my, you know, it put it into an idea and we did an event and it was just kind of a fun thing just as a charity thing. And um, it was just a smaller little event and we put it together. We're like, you know, that was a lot of fun and, you know, we should be doing this more often. So we just kind of started small, got a, got a ring, started doing a couple smaller shows and uh, you know, we're starting to build a good little fan base now. And, you know, it's just getting more fun as we're getting deeper into it. So when, when you talk about wrestling and Sheldon mentioned, you know, we, we were watching, you know, I was a big wrestling fan in the eighties. I mean, all the guys, you know, you bit from, from your dad, uh, especially the heart foundation when he was, he was wrestling with Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Uh, you know, I was a huge macho man, savage and ultimate warrior fan. I could go on and on about my childhood and my wrestling dreams. And then, you know, right around the eighties, uh, back into the nineties with the attitude era, uh, you know, actually after the Montreal screw job and, a little bit after that, I uh, kind of fell off, like Sheldon said, you know, into football and, and, you know, my focus was becoming a professional athlete, not too much time spent watching TV, but that was also the time that UFC, I remember the, the ultimate fighting championship really took a, took a hold, maybe not as a, as a major um, uh, combat sport, but it was, is really building. And, and, you know, I remember the locker rooms being early in the, you know, when I was in Edmonton and in Calgary, you know, that became really a lot of the talk from, you know, young guys from 18 to 35 year old, from what you see as a, as a wrestling business, uh, professional and owner and, and being in the industry your whole life, has that, hurt i mean the assumption on the outside for me is that it hurt wrestling's attendance it hurts wrestling popularity has it and where do you go from there knowing that there the, that competition came up and it kind of really took a stranglehold on yeah things. i mean I, I, definitely at first it seemed like they were in competition against each other um you know it was something brand new i don't think anyone had ever seen you know actual fighting like especially the ufc when it was first coming around it was crazy with the mismatches of uh weight categories and stuff and you know just the yeah no bar barely any rules and stuff so it was i remember even myself you know being pretty glued to it when it first came out too so um yeah i remember the first one in ufc one there was the sumo wrestler versus the muay thai guy and the sumo wrestler runs like at the guy the mid the belt yeah. gets kicked in the face knocked down and he's getting a hundred elbows yeah. to the nose and i remember like, seeing okay, guys that's it. guys like coleman <laughs> yeah, and uh stunning. gracie and stuff you know there's a lot of yeah. old legends and stuff so um yeah. but i think especially now it seems yeah. like they're kind of almost working together a bit like ufc and wwe kind of trading guys and um you know kind of pro promoting each other a bit in a way still in competition but you know i think overall it's just people you know people want to see fighting and that people want to see entertainment and you know wrestling you know it's it's more entertainment but it also requires a lot of athletic ability and um you know i think ufc most ufc people recognize that and uh you know i, I know i think both are fans of each other so well, and I think today with like social media being what it is, it's all about building a personal brand and, you know, just take a look at what Mo Jabari has been doing, right? He's got amazing personality, he's an amazing athlete, and he knows how to self-promote. Um, and so when you've got guys like that, you basically your league becomes a platform um, to, for guys to promote their own careers and build it up, build their own fan bases. I love that you guys are starting with the grassroots again, just hitting the small Alberta communities. Um, or Alberta communities, I shouldn't say just small, but like, that's how stampede got started mm -hmm. and they built names and kids start, you know, following these guys and, and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of an exciting platform to be able to, um, if I'm a guy and I'm not playing football or I don't, you know, I'm an athletic guy, why not try wrestling? Cause Randy, I'm sure I, I thought about it when I, before, when I didn't make it into the CFL, the first couple of times I was seriously considering Maybe I take the show on the road and try to learn wrestling. Yeah. Well, I, was just gonna I, say, I guess yeah, I didn't really ask the question, else. but yeah. 
No, like just like you're saying, you know, a lot of guys in football always make the crossover to wrestling. You know, The Rock, everyone knows he played for the Stamps. Uh, my uncle Jim, he played for the Raiders. My grandpa was, you know, tied in with the Eskimos. So there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of relationship with wrestling and, and football too there. So, you know, it's, um, you know, a lot of big guys in football. So it's, you know, easy to make that transition over to wrestling too. Well, I'll tell you this story. When I was in university, I was in my second year. One of my good buddies and I, we loved wrestling. Like we just, we'd go to all the matches and, and all that stuff. And uh, um, we were going to leave uh, university uh, to come out west to wrestle. Um, he was a Saskatchewan boy and I was, I was living at home. And uh, yeah, I, did, I never wound up doing it. I, I had my sights set on playing pro ball, but I always thought I wanted to become a wrestler. I always wanted to. My buddy actually quit school. He came out west. Uh, he wrestled at your grandpa's. Uh, he was at, at the, the, oh, yeah. the, the, the dungeon for a bit. I think he did three years with you guys. He, he wrestled under the name of, they called him Kyle Cruel. Uh, no, Kyle Benoit. Cousin of Chris. Okay. That was his. That was his uh, wrestling name, and he did that for a few years. And he went onto the to the RCMP. But yeah, he told me a, a bunch of stories. Can you can you tell me? Because obviously, there's the connection between the dungeon, which is where the guys trained, and uh, your wrestling promotion, Dungeon Wrestling. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, growing up? Did you see the bear that they had? Uh, was it living under the stairs at, at at Dungeon? Is that a true story? That the the bear was living under yeah, the so, stairs. Yeah, so well, that the was mansion? you know way before my time. So that would have been more when my dad was a kid and he was younger. Um, but yeah, Terrible Ted um, was a true true character. He used to be a part of the Stampede Wrestling, and he would stay at my dad's house or at the, my grandpa's house. And um, in my dad's book, he says how they would. Um, you know, all the kids would eat ice cream and have their toes hanging down over the cage and the bear would be licking the ice cream off their toes through the cage. So, um, <laughs> kind of, that's, you know, obviously how we got our logo pays homage to that. And, uh, that's amazing. There's so many cool stories. I mean, my buddy, Chris, he, he came out and he told me a bunch of stories, like even back in the day when Andre the giant, they used to ride in the buses and if the bus would break down, he would go out and, and he'd, uh, he'd be doing the, the thumb for the hitchhiking and nobody would stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, uh, back yeah, to, uh, cool. uh, back to dungeon wrestling, how many events are you guys planning to put on this year? Is this something that you're up to like a monthly show? Like how, how often are you putting on events? So right now we're, we're aiming at doing about four to six shows per year, just as we're yeah. kind of growing here. Um, you know, before the, we're, this one coming up on April 7th is our, our third show at the pavilion. Um, so we're, you know, trying to do a show pretty much every two months at the, at this rate. And then we'd like <laughs> to get uh, more of a, you know, like, a, like on a monthly basis kind of, kind of thing. But for, for this first year, we're just looking at about six. And how's it been finding the talent and bringing wrestlers in? Is that, uh, is that the easy part or, or do you, do, are you going out recruiting or do you just train the guys from, uh, from start from, from scratch? Well, so right now, like, um, the guys that we're bringing in are, are pretty established and, you know, my dad has the connections. Mo, who's, uh, obviously with us, he has a lot of connections too, to more like the indie wrestling scene. So, you know, yeah. we got a good, uh, good contact list for, for wrestlers. And one of the things that we're looking to do, uh, hopefully this year is be starting up a, like a wrestling school kind of program. So we can have guys that can come in and they can train and, you know, hopefully, uh, we can give them a match at one of our events and like a prelim kind of thing. So how does that, how does that work? Do, do, are guys and under again, contract that, or can you oh, get ahead, guys from different leagues? Um, like how well do the different, uh, leagues and networks work together here? I think, I think anyone is pretty much, you know, if the only ones that can't really do anything is WWE. Um, yeah. like if you're on contract with WWE, you're not really allowed to do anything outside of them. Uh, AEW is a little more flexible, so you can use some of their guys as long as it's not uh, conflicting with them. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy to get guys just depending on their schedule. So you just gotta, you know, try to lock them in and, uh, you know, well in advance. So, so you would have a unique challenge in terms of your promotion, um, developing a storyline, right? Like, because obviously, uh, wrestling is, you know, the baby faces versus the heels, try to develop some sort of, uh, conflict before the match and, you know, have it resolved in the match by them kicking, kicking the crap out of each other. That's what we love about wrestling. How do you develop a storyline 
uh, in a small promotion that allows for that, uh, I guess, pre-story to, to, to grow? Do you, do you do it through social media? Do you do it in the event? Do you have some people writing out kind of what the script is? or uh, Because I assume that would be a challenge. Yeah, for and, small and that's right? where, you know, I, I personally don't have any experience. And that's where I'm learning everything pretty much from my dad, who's, uh, you know, he's... He's pretty well experienced, I'd say. So he, um, him and Mo are, you know, they kind of are construct the storylines and, you know, my dad's just trying to show me basically, you know, the do's and don'ts of the wrestling world. So, you know, it's just, uh, kind of just picking his brain and learning everything from him and not to just, not to mention only him, but, you know, I have my uncle Ross, who is also tied in with Stampede Wrestling, uncle Wayne, uncle Bruce, uh, you know, cousins. A lot, of, a lot of family that have uh, their input. And so, well. so that's amazing that you bring that up because, again, when um, when we wanted to, to, to promote the event, we obviously reached out to you because you're doing it. But how much involvement is the rest of the family involved in this promotion to try and see it succeed? You know, is it is it kind of an arm's length thing where you can just call them up and ask for advice? Or are, is there sort of a day today where you all meet and talk about, okay, what are we going to do? Uh, how are we going to promote yeah, it and, and those like sorts of things? It's kind of just like day of, like we, you know, my uncle Ross, he, he's very helpful in many different ways and he helps us, um, you know, with the promotion and stories. And he was, you know, a part of the one last show where he got the blood spit in his face. So, um, I don't think he knew that was happening until <laughs> about 20 minutes before it happened. But, um, uh, you know, he, he's been really helpful in the whole thing. My uncle Wayne, he, um, you know, he was the more the mechanical kind of guy and he helped us with the ring setup and making sure it was set up properly. And, you know, my uncle Bruce, who's very knowledgeable and he's been around the stampede business for a long time. So, you know, he, his knowledge and uh, everything that he brings is very important too. So where do you see this going then? Because you've got all the resources in the world, right? You've got all the experience in the world. Um, you know, you're trying to grow organically, get people excited about your guys and your league. Like, is this something that you see going across Western Canada? Is this something you see ever expanding into the States? Like, where do you take a league like this? I think the, so the, that was the, the kind of the funny thing is we weren't really, when we were first starting this, we weren't really planning on being like this major promotion. We were just kind of, you know, going to do these kind of Smart. smaller shows and kind of just go with that. And then, uh, you know, we outgrew our smaller venue very fast with, I think it only held a hundred people. So we're like, you know, we need to get something bigger. And now it's, you know, we're kind of just on the fly figuring things out. But, uh, I, you know, I, I see it going somewhere, like you said, like a Western Canada kind of thing. I'd like to keep it Canadian, especially Alberta. Uh, yeah. you know, we have a lot of people in the Edmonton area, always messaging us. Like, when are you guys coming up here? We want to see a dungeon show. I know they got a really good, uh, fan base in Edmonton there. So that'll be our, our next step is, you know, once we step out of Calgary, we want to get into Edmonton and then, you know, kind of do like a little stampede circuit, hit all the major towns and cities in Alberta. And then, um, you know, as we get a little bit bigger, we can think about, you know, hitting BC and Saskatchewan and, you know, who knows, maybe the rest of Canada. I, I think you'd be huge in Saskatchewan personally, just as, like a Saskatchewan farm kid growing up. Uh, my <laughs> buddy still, still talk wrestling. Right. So it's uh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I got a question for you that it fascinates me. You know, wrestling has always been, um, it's been a reflection and a caricature of society. You know, I remember back to the nineties and the Gulf war when, you know, Sergeant Slaughter versus the iron Sheik, and they made the plate up that whole bit. And then, you know, the, 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 like there's always, there's always a reflection in society about things going on. Are there things you can't do anymore that it's kind of like, even in the world of wrestling, you know, I know there was the attitude era with like a lot of the sex and stuff really kind of pushed the envelope to the point where now they can't do it. And that's especially in the WWE with being a publicly traded company. They've got that, you know, that that image that they've got to maintain and shareholders and sponsors and all that. But, you know, on, on an independent circuit, can you can you still do whatever you want? Or are there certain things you've got to stay away from in terms of storylines or or just issues that? Yeah, you don't I, think, touch? I think right now it's, you know, we can pretty much do whatever we want, we can shape it any way we want. But, um, you know, the way my dad and I see it is, you know, keeping it kind of more, you know, less flashy, less, you know, WWE with the big, um, you know, smoke and machines and stuff. And, 
uh, we want to just keep it about the wrestling. We want to make sure that's what the main focus is and people see that we're bringing in the best wrestlers in not just Canada, but in the world. So that's our main focus in trying to bring back like, you know, solid stampede wrestling the way it used to be. And, um, you know, not doing so much, uh, you know, dropping a guy off a 30 foot ladder and bleeding for 25 minutes, like, you know, less kind of gore right. and less violent matches and just more like, you know, the actual uh, formula that stampede wrestling used to use. So when you talk about training guys and you talk about eventually opening up a school, which seems like a fantastic idea, um, is there a push to kind of look to youth as a sort of a way to, you know, because there are so many activities available for kids. They could do anything, right? They could play musical instruments. They could do combat sports, individual sports, team sports. How do you, how do you sell uh, wrestling? I, I guess the pro wrestling style to kids or do you wait, you know, let them go through the evolution of that Olympic style wrestling uh, and then kind of maybe, you know, you identify talent at competitions and stuff and then say, Hey, you know what? You'd be a great candidate. Like what, what would be yeah, the so, process? Uh, one of the, um, one of the ways that this actually came to be was one of our, one of the first shows we did was out in Sik Sika out on the first nation. And, um, okay. uh, Dr. Tyler White, who's with Sik Sika health services, uh, has been one of our partners and, um, he kind of suggested it as an idea, like, you know, maybe we could do a little camp or something where you guys come in and you guys help some kids, uh, because, you know, out on the first nations, you know, sometimes there's not a lot of stuff to do and, you know, he's trying to get some kids more engaged in, in more sports and, you know, fun things to do. And he's like, I think uh, wrestling would be a cool thing for you guys to bring out here and, you know, try to get the kids engaged and, and, you know, we could develop you know, we could develop the first First Nation wrestler in WWE or the first champion. So that's what we were kind of thinking. We were like, yeah, you know what? We should be we should be definitely targeting the younger and trying to get some kids and um, bring them in and train them. And I don't think – I just don't think they know that there is that's a platform out there. Yeah. yeah. So they just – they don't know where to look. So if we give them somewhere to go, um, I think they'll, they'll come, and especially if they have guys like uh, – um, you know, my dad that can do seminars, my cousin, Harry, who's, you know, probably one of the best wrestlers in the world. I'd say, um, if you get guy, two of those kind of guys and Mojabari, get them teaching, um, uh, you know, you're going to have a really good shot at, at launching into a successful wrestling career. Well, and that's kind of neat too, cause you, you don't get more well, Albertan or more Canadian than that, right? Like actually engaging with the first nations and, and that would, I personally, I think that would be really cool. Cause I don't remember a first nations wrestler from any from any era but here's an opportunity with this starting up big in calgary again to build that uh to build that uh, relationship and i think it'd be get great support yeah well and if i could add something if i could add something that you know uh sheldon and i we, we talk a lot and you know uh i'm gonna give props to sheldon here and, and to what you're doing because sheldon always says this thing he's like activism without action is, is just hot air, right? Like, and everyone talks about engaging, you know, youth, engaging indigenous youth, uh, all, and, and you're out there doing it, right? You're going on to, um, uh, the six, six, uh, uh, first nations, you're, 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 you're helping those kids. And now you're looking for ways to help them more. And so I think that's, that's really amazing because if part of what we talk about in our show is, is, uh, we always, get back to this thing it seems that we always get back to mentorship especially for men right uh young boys uh need coaching young boys need strong mentors that will help develop discipline help develop respect uh work ethic and attitudes and and there's a lot of kids that are that are dying for it you know there's there's kids in calgary that that you know they don't have parents at home working or, or you know they, they don't have one parent or the other oftentimes don't have dads in their lives and and uh you know we always thought football was a great avenue for kids because football, again, predominantly male, uh, predominantly male coaches that invest in you and kind of push you to be your best. But uh, why not, uh, you know, why, why not go into uh, neighborhoods where these Absolutely. kids need uh, s some guidance? And, and, and what you guys provide is, is really amazing. I'm, I'm glad we got to this space that we could talk about this because I, I really see that, you know, what a legacy, right? The heart legacy, you, 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 you know, not just your dad, but your, your entire family in the wrestling uh, culture, you, you know, you, from, from your grandpa's uh, days in stampede wrestling, you know, you t we talk about the hitmen, 
You know, that name's going to live on forever. We're one of the most successful junior hockey league franchises, uh, you know, in, in Canada and the U S uh, we talk, you know, about, um, the, the bar, the Hitman bar that just opened up another nice legacy piece for Calgary. But, you know, when you think about what's important to people and the community around you, it's that piece right there, connecting with youth and giving them something to dream about and to look forward. So I just want to commend you for that because that's something that people need these days more than anything else, more than, you know, where do we spend our money more than, you know, where you go to school, what sports you play, but, but that connection. So I, th I think that's amazing. And, and, and that you're going to provide that for a lot of kids that need it. It's, it, it's pretty yeah, special. No, I, and um, you know, I'll, I'll give uh, the tip of the hat to my dad on that. He, when we were first doing the smaller shows, it was, we were doing it at the tool shed brewery and um, obviously uh, you're not allowed to have kids in there for, for wrestling events. So he was the one that was like, you know, you really want to focus on, on targeting like families and kids and trying to get them in and um, you need to find a space where you can do that. So that's when we started, uh, you know, expanding our, you know, where we're going to do these shows. So um, then when we did our, our first show, yeah, it was, you know, it was totally worth it because the kids that were there at the shows, they're the ones that are, right at the front and getting right into it and they're having the best time. So it's, you know, and then when they're having a good time, you know, the, fa the parents are having a good time and, um, yeah. you know, so it's just, uh, you know, it's really cool to see. And especially when we did the thing at the Hitman or uh, the Hitman game just a couple of weeks ago, um, the kids were really engaged in that and having a good time. So it was just, you know, really cool to see. So, so let's talk about the show on April 7th. Let's talk about, uh, you know, the, 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 the where, when, what, uh, how much, uh, you know, what, like, what's it going to cost a family for snacks and all that? Because people want to know, right? We want to know what, like, how it's going to go. So, so tell us a little bit about the actual event. Yeah, so on it's, uh, it's going to be on Good Friday, on Friday, April 7th. And um, at the Victoria Pavilion, the legendary, legendary Victoria Pavilion. Um, you know, that's where Stampede Wrestling used to be. And uh, starts, I think we do meet and greets going to start at five o'clock and goes till seven. So the families and whoever or all the fans can come down five to seven, meet the wrestlers, you know, get their seats and stuff. Yeah. And then oh, that's uh, awesome. the bell will ring for the wrestling right about 7 p.m. And, uh, you know, we have all the, the matchups on our Instagram, Facebooks, but uh, our main event is going to be uh, Nick Aldis, who's the Stu Hart heavyweight champion. Uh, he actually just issued an open challenge today to uh, to see who wants to come and test him because he's three and zero now as a champion. So, so yeah, uh, I don't want to give out too much information, but uh, you know, there there's going to be some guys looking to challenge him. So. Is there? Is there any room for Chevy and Nasty? That sounds like a great tag team. I don't know. Like I, I just have dreams. I don't care. I'm 47 years old. I'll step in the ring and learn to wrestle. I, I want to get in there one day. You're gonna, you guys are gonna have to train me up. I'll, I'll do the, well, the I'm the, just gonna the, buy the charity a ticket match or whatever. Are there tickets still available, or is it sold out? Uh, tickets are still available. Yeah, and uh, all you got to do is just go to DungeonWrestling.ca, and uh, we have the option to buy tickets or order on pay per view. Which yeah, because I heard that. Because now you're you're on pay per view see, now as see, well, right? Like you can you can if you're not in Calgary that night, you can still follow the match. How how do we find you on pay per view? Yeah, it's uh, j again just uh, all you got to do is go to the website, and there the website is still um, you know in its infant stages, so um, we don't have much going on there. Only things you can do is just buy tickets to the event or buy on pay per view. So it's uh, pretty simple to navigate on the website there, but. Uh, yeah, all you got to do for if you want tickets, go to the website. And if you want to buy it on pay-per-view, just go to yeah, dungeonwrestling.ca. So are you going to be the big promoter when you're there as well? Are you That's like awesome. the, the ringmaster and in introducing the fighters? Or what's your role on uh, game night? I, I'm a little less, you know, I'm not as much of a character uh, in the show. I mean, I am there and, you know, I'll say thanks to everyone for coming kind of thing. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't insert myself into the into the storyline too much. Um, you know, if I have to do something, I don't mind doing it, but uh, you know, I, usually on the day of, I'm pretty busy running around and getting everything organized. And then once the show starts, I finally get to, to sit back and and watch the show. That's amazing. You got two different cats over here. Sheldon <laughs> wants to buy a chair for the event and I want to take a chair to the head. <laughs> I'd love to see both. <laughs> well, uh, Dallas, Dallas, we, uh, we really appreciate you, uh, coming on. Um, love to have you on again as this thing grows. We wish you all the best, like, uh, you know, 
Calgary company, uh, Calgary family, known internationally. And, uh, you know, Alberta is known for beef, but it's known for the Hart family and, and a strong, strong wrestling tradition. And uh, really happy to see you taking the reins and, and uh, bringing this back. Because I think, yeah, it, it's needed. And uh, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I appreciate guys. And, yeah, you know, I've, um, you know, we're really happy and excited. And, um, you know, we're, we feel like we're just in the beginning stages here. So, you know, we, we hope everyone comes and checks us out on uh, April 7th and sees what we're all about. Right on. Well, we'll be uh, sure to post the links here uh, and uh, share it to our crowd as much as we can. Uh, Dallas, once again, thanks for joining us on the ride today. It was uh, great to get to know you a little bit, and I got a feeling we're going to be following you a lot closer in the future. Awesome. Sheldon, Chevy, appreciate it, guys. Thanks.